All right, guys, in today's video, we're talking about how to maximize your rotation and complete your turn and really focus on the backswing during this video. This is something Trevor and I both uh, have been working on our own swing with to re remind ourselves. And Trevor, would you say to start us off here, like most golfers I work with, I'm sure you see the same thing. The higher the handicap goes, the more they tend to need more turn. Correct. Right. Yep. So like, the, if anyone has enough turn to the players that I see, they're almost always a, a good player. 100%. And the kind of the worst ball striker, higher handicap, whatever, um, you know, the majority of them, some of them turn up, but the majority of them need more turn. And so with that in mind, especially if you're someone who shoots above 80, 90, 100, like odds are you need more turn. And if not, at least you make sure you have enough, right? Correct, you gotta have enough. And the backswing turn is a piece that sets up so many good downswing things. So backswing turn. Um, there was two really good videos that I saw Trevor do on this with the backswing, two really, really cool drills that we haven't really done uh, exactly these versions. So I'd, I'd love to share that with them. For sure. And I know the first part, Trevor, if you can kind of guide us through that was about, you know, finding your maximum turn. Mm -hmm, or absolutely. Maximum amount. Absolutely. So one of the ways that I like to find what my maximum turn is so number one, I'm going to have a stick right in the center of my body right here on my feet just so that I know where my starting point is. Okay? So this is right here. So if, if I put this up on, up on my shoulder line, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stand straight up and down because again, the more that my spine is straight up and down, this is where I have more access to my rib cage, which is basically, I call it the engine to my golf swing. If I don't have access to my rib cage, the only thing I can do is I could turn my pelvis this much and my shoulders that much. That would be my absolute maximum mm. if I never access what my rib cage is, which again, we can go into setup, but we'll save that for another one. So when I'm standing straight up and down here, I have the ability to rotate crazy. Mm. So now if yeah, I use the front side of the stick and I relate it to here, I'm gonna see how far behind this line in the center of my feet I can get this while I'm taking the pointy end of the stick and seeing how far on this side of the line I can get mm. it there while I'm staying on center. And the beauty, why I like people to stand up straight up and down firstly, is they're not gonna do this. Yeah, right. Uh, they're gonna stay in balance when they're turning. And that's one of the big things as well. We need to be able to stay in balance when we're making a back swing. So this might be the first place that I would go and I'd say, okay, here's the maximum that I could turn. So that's maximum. I'm gonna do that one more time. And a great way of doing this so that you're connecting with it neurologically hold these positions for five seconds so that you can mm. actually internalize. Like if I took my glasses off for a sec, this is another way I do this. I'll go here, I'll rotate to maximum, and now I'm gonna close my eyes so I can internalize with what it is that I'm feeling is different because when my eyes are closed, I lose all my distractions out here. Mm. When my eyes are open, I see that sign, I see those people, I can hear the wind, I see the trees, yada, yada, yada. And I start, I'm, instead of me focusing on what's changing in my body right here, I'm more focused on what those distractions are. So I do like to do a lot of this type of position training where I close my eyes. And then I actually want to try and recreate that again with my eyes closed, which now for you viewers, make sure you're videoing yourself doing this so that you can see the differentials in them, especially if you're a visual learner. Now, Trevor, when you're doing that, any are you allowing maximum pelvis rotation? Doesn't matter. Everything. I'm. I, I want to learn what my maximum potential is. That's what I call this. Like for what I can do right here, because the the more that we can turn, like you were saying, Eric, the more we can turn. Generally, that's what we see out of the best players in the world. Like if we look at Dustin Johnson. That guy's like 145 degrees. Yeah. And most of us are teaching 45 with the pelvis, 90 with the shoulders. Well, he's 145 up go here. Go as much as you can. Exactly. Learn how to firstly go as much as you can. That doesn't mean you have to play at that, but know what your maximum is. Now, if we started to take this to where we build a back swing out of it, I'm going to still stand straight up and down, turn to maximum, and now I'm going to use my rib cage to bend mm. to where I can now see the golf ball. And I'm going to let my neck sit down so I can see the golf ball. I'm not going to have my chin up in the air like this. I'm going to be here, rotate to maximum, and now I'm creating this bend from my rib cage right there. 
Yeah, let me, let, me, let me try that one too, Trevor. I'm, I'm gonna, yeah, let, let's do this. Cause I know there's another, there's another one that I wanna do next selfishly cause I, <laughs> I yep. need that one too. Absolutely. So for this part, if I'm just standing there doing this at home, especially if you're at home and you're somewhere where it's like not super nice out, you know, th this would be a nice thing. Like I like this even just for the stretch I get out of it. I think exactly. it would be able to practice and get some movement going. Yeah. So I'm just standing normal to the ground, club across or stick across, yep. go as far back as I can. That feels about max for me right about there. Yep. And then after I would do that once or twice, I kick in that side bend. Exactly. So from there, now you're going to come in and you're going to feel from your rib cage. That's your rib cage. And notice when Eric's doing this, he's not changing his pelvic height. He's oh, not sinking. That is my, that's because now we lose all that side bend. As soon as I, if Eric goes here and he kicks his pelvis back again the wrong way, now the side bend that he just created is irrelevant and then he's not going to be able to separate as well. I have some issues with that coming down. Yeah. Okay. From here, like this, all rib cage. All rib cage. So it's like it's like your lead side oblique is turning into an accordion file. Okay. And you're smashing like it. There you go. So your right side or your trail side's elongated, and your lead side is turning into this accordion file right here. And if you haven't done this before, that's gonna feel kind of like an oblique crunch. Exactly. If you were doing a gym. Yep. Yeah. It's exactly what it would feel like. Now let's say I did that for a little bit. I'm stretching it out. Obviously, I can I can feel that you know when I'm swinging. The other version that I really like that Trevor did, and I want to just make sure we have this right. Yep. Um, and we've done different turning drills and stuff like this, but sometimes, and as you guys know, man, sometimes the smallest little tweak or difference in a drill or feel can make the world of difference. It right? unlocks uh, it unlocks it for you. It's gonna be huge. So one of the uh, things that I like that Trevor did, and correct me if I'm wrong here, I think we we have a stick kind of in line with the golf ball. Yep. Right, which is relatively in the middle of my stance. And we're going to start the same way with the club across. Mm -hmm. And we want to get the, the grip behind the ball. Or exactly. Line. Yep. Grip would go behind this line right here. But one of the little reference points he put in that, like, because we've talked about different uh, turn drills, is he also talked about, hey, get the other side, which I have the club head here, on this side, on the lead side of the stick. Exactly. We so, never talked about that before. So when Eric does this, you'll notice he's getting the grip on this side of the line, but the club head is now on the front side of the line. This is balance. That's how we know that he's staying centered when he's doing this. What oh. I see out of everybody is they just go this way. Yeah. So now we're in a position where all we're going to do is slide back through the golf ball to keep it inside right there. Yeah, exactly. So I'm not, and that's such an interesting little tweak there because if I just try and get this grip behind here, I could go all kinds of places, right? Yep. But if I get the trail side, this side, the right side of the club, on this side of the target or this side of the line, as I'm doing that, that puts me in a really good spot. That feels really, really good to me. Let me try that with that. Let me do that with Absolutely. the club like this. Because that feel for me of making sure I get my, yeah. So for me getting that trail side around, yep. you know, feels like good. And I need that even more than my lead side back. Different people are going to feel different stuff, right? Yeah, exactly. If somebody needs shoulder retraction or they've never felt the, the trail side of their rib cage turn that much. Yeah, like what is this? So there. if I was doing this, I would kind of start here, me personally, I'd kind of start here like this, get a feel for that, what that feels like. I like then the grip back. Yeah, it feels good. That's it. I'm gonna just see, start slow, kind of feeling like I'm transferring that same feel, that same turn. It feels like I turn the volume up on my turn there just a little bit more just to kind of complete the backswing. 100%. Yeah. So when someone's training this, I think like anything else, and I don't want to go deep in this because like we talked about, we were talking like, we could probably talk for two hours about just like how to practice this stuff correctly. You know? Exactly. Um, but for the sake of this video not being two hours, basically they're doing the movements, maybe giving themselves feedback with me or video, and then like kind of slowly adding a club in and then slowly adding a ball, building the swing up. Bingo. So like if I have you, can you jump in here for one more? Yeah. So what I would recommend you do it, what you viewers at home do, once you've done the awareness pieces that Eric and I have just showed you and you get a club in your hand, I'm going to have him take it up to the top and freeze it. So now that he's here, I'm going to have him hold this. So now close your eyes again right here. One, two, three, four, five. Now relax, go right into it. So now you've got that feel, copy it. That's how you're going to connect with it. So don't give, your time, don't give yourself time to think, turn your thoughts into feels. That is how we become better players. 
feel what you want to do. Don't think about what you want to do. And that's what Eric just did right there. He learned how to feel that in his practice swing, in his rehearsal, and he moved that into motion. We can copy feels very, very well as people. I like that. You know when someone's good when they talk in taglines there like I do it, they always have like a little tagline, turn thoughts into feels. Guys, hopefully this helps you in terms of uh, the back swing turn. Like we mentioned, all of our coaching, if we can look at all the golfers we have, there is a clear correlation between those that have full, complete backswing turns and their ball striking ability. No doubt about that, okay? So you either want to make sure you ha have that in there or at least checkpoints, right? Make sure you have enough of those things. And yep. to start with, utilize these pieces, do the motions first, and then slowly add the club back. And I like that little five-second feel. We're going to put Trevor's info in the description down below if you want to go see him for in-person lessons, online lessons, online content. There's a lot of great stuff. We'll put that all down below. Thank you guys for watching. Thanks, man.